Good morning, this is Sir Romel Magkalas, your subject teacher for Practical Research 2. Chapter 3, Research Methods and Procedure This particular chapter presents the methods and techniques of the study in order to obtain, analyze, and interpret the data requirements for the study. This also includes the populations, the research instruments, constructions, and validation of research instrument, data collection, data processing, and statistical treatment. Here are the contents of Chapter 3. Research Methodology Data Gathering Procedure Population and Sample of the Study Research Instruments And thus is the validation of the instrument. Research Methodology It is necessary for the researcher to design a methodology for the problem chosen. One should note that even if the method considered in two problems is the same, methodology may be different. It is important for the researcher to know not only the research methods necessary for the research undertaken, but also the methodology. Before proceeding, it is necessary to define the terms that will use in depreciating this from one another. A method is a technique which the researcher uses to gather and generate data about the subject of their study. Methodology is the section of the research paper which explains why the researcher chose to use particular methods. While a research design is a plan, structures a study, to ensure the data collected and generated will contain the information. Here are the types of quantitative research design. Number 1. Descriptive research. A design to give answer to the question of who, what, when, where, and how, which are linked with a research problem. Descriptive research does not answer the question why because it does not seek to explain why certain things happen. It is applied only to describe what exists and to gather information about the current status of a certain phenomenon. This type of research observes a subject or situation in a natural and unchanged environment. Here are some examples of descriptive research. Number 1. A description of how parents feel about the K-12 curriculum. Number two, a description of how youth's perception of the 2016 elections. Number two, experimental research. A type of quantitative research that authorizes researchers to control the situation which allows them to answer the question, what caused something to occur? In addition, it is also sanctioned researcher to identify cause and effect relationships between variables and to distinguish placebo effect from treatment effects. Here are some examples of experimental research. Number 1, the effect of positive reinforcement on one's attitude to excel in school. Number 2, the effect of support groups on smoking. Number 3, Survey Research. It is intended to acquire information from people concerning the predominance, distribution, and interrelations of variables within an identified group. In simple terms, surveys are done to gather evidence of people's knowledge, opinions, attitudes, and values on various issues and concerns. Surveys are used for collecting data that are mainly quantitative. Here are some examples of survey research. Number 1. Survey on sexual violence against women in Quezon City. Number 2. Voters' preference of barangay election. Number 4. Correlational research. Correlational are based on pairs of measures or scores from members of a single sample and provide an indication of the strengths of the relationship between two variables, 
that embody characteristic or, or performance by the group. It tries to define the degree of relationship between two or more variables using statistical data. This type of research seeks to interpret the relationship between and among the number of facts information is through. Here are some examples of correlational research. Number one, relationship between successful career and educational attainment. Number two, the relationship between high grades and having tutors. The last type of quantitative research design is the casual comparative or the quasi-experimental. It endeavors to a certain cost-effect relationship among variables. This type of research is very similar to true experiments, but with keys similar to true experiment and key dissimilarities such as number one, an independent variable, is identified but not manipulated. Number two, the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable are measured. Here are some examples of casual comparative or quasi-experimental. Number one, the effect of exercising regularly to the body image. Number two, the effect of gender on college course choices. Here is an example of methodology of the study. In this example, they use a descriptive method. Data Gathering Procedure It is the step-by-step -step procedure on how the researcher gather data from the respondents. It is the technique used to obtain the information used in a research paper. Here is an example of Data Gathering Procedure. Respondents of the Study Respondents are those persons who have been invited to participate in a particular study and have actually taken part in the study. This definition applies to both qualitative and quantitative studies. Here is an example of respondents of the study. Sampling for research Sampling is a process through which a researcher selects a portion or segment from the population at the center of the researcher's study. While population is a group of persons or objects that possesses some common characteristics that are of interest to the researcher and about which the researcher seeks to learn more. Types and subtypes of sampling. Types of sampling. Number one, probability sampling. It is a type of sampling in which all the members of the entire population have a chance of being selected. This is also called scientific sampling. Number two, non probability sampling. It is a process of selecting respondents in which not all the members of the entire population are given a chance of being selected as samples. Subtypes of sampling Number 1. Probability sampling Letter A. Simple random samples it is a method of choosing sample in which all the members of the population are given an equal chance of being selected. This includes the fishbowl method, table of random numbers, and the roulette wheel. B. Stratified random samples. In a stratified sampling, the population is first divided into different strata, and then the sampling follows. Age, gender, and educational qualifications are some possible criteria used to divide the population into strata. Letter C, cluster samples. Cluster samples is used when your population is very large, even possibly involving a whole country. 
And last is the systemic samples. It is a method of selecting every nth element of the population. Example of systemic samples are every fifth, eight until the desired sample size is reached. For the non-probability sampling, we have A for positive sampling, also known as judgmental sampling involves the conscious selection by the researcher of certain people to include in a study. Convenience sampling, also known as an accidental sampling. People are included in the research study because they just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Snowball sampling. In a snowball sample, participants who are already part of the sample are asked to identify others who would possibly be suited for inclusion in the study and who would be agreeable to taking part in it. And last is the quota sampling, in somewhat similar to stratified sampling, in that the population is divided in strata and the researcher deliberately sets specific proportions in the sample whether or not the resulting proportion is reflective of the total population. Here is an example of sampling technique. In this example, they use a simple random sampling technique. Research instruments. The instrument is the generic term that researchers use for a measurement device. Survey or questionnaire are perhaps the most commonly used instrument in research. It is a list of planned written questions about a particular topic with the space provided for the response to each question, intended to answer by a number of person. Two types of survey or questionnaire. Number one, structured. Possible answers are provided and respondents just have to select from them. Number two, unstructured. The questions are open-ended, no options are provided, and the respondents are free to answer however they wish. Here is an example of research instrument. In this example, they use questionnaire. Here is an example of questionnaire. In this example, the questionnaire are divided into two parts. The first part is about the profile of the respondents, while part two consists of a statement that describes about the topic of the research. Next is an example of questionnaire. Number one, greetings to the respondents. Number two, respondents profile. Number three, the Likert scale, and number four is the sets of question. Validation of the instrument. When a test or measurement is validated, it simply means that the researcher has come to the opinion that the instrument measures what it was designed to measure. In other words, validity is no more than an expert opinion. Here is an example of validation. In this example, the researcher seek help of the professionals to validate their questionnaire. Thank you for listening. This has been Sir O.